No, we're not doing the normal intro for this. We don't need the normal intro. You know what it is. It's Rebuilding Hockey Town. What else do I need to say? You don't need the big theatrics. And here's what we're doing today. We're 72, three episodes into this. Damn it. If you're still with me here, if you're even watching live and you haven't watched the entirety of this series, it is what it is. This series is what it is. We're continuing on because we're insane, and that's just what we do. That's just what we do. We say it's going to end, and it just never ends. The misery continues. The misery continues. We can win 50. You know, we can win 50 games. Holy shit, Sylvan wants to be paid, doesn't he? Oh, look who's getting traded. Probably you. Holy shit. 1035 is the magic number for old Sylvan there. He's getting traded. And aside from that, we have so many pissed off players. It's not even funny. Like, it's just not funny anymore. Holy hell. When it comes crashing down, and it hurts inside. Well, that's uh, that's what we're dealing with here. And let me back out of that because I totally totally butcher that 185 the magic number holy shit i went way too far there we go there we go galchenyuk probably won't even resign with us at this point we'll see we'll try we might lose he and scarlet for absolutely nothing and if i could uh, not mess up a calculator app uh, input that would be great Grr eight two six two five is the magic number for one gal Chenyuk. Nolan Scarlet, I'm sorry, you're a fan favorite, you're an enforcer, people love you, but if you want to leave at this point, I understand. I totally understand. Uh two three seven five is the magic number for him. Uh Jenkins, not Leroy, so you can go. Uh Blair. You can go. Paquette, you can go. And Hargrave, we finally have to sign. I don't know why NHL level players who never played with that guy at the AHL level are pissed about him being released. That's kind of a pain in the ass. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, Evans here. Evans, 6425. Using the 85% trick. Let's see what we can uh, what we can manage to do there. Uh, Roche. 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 You are awful. Get off my team. Left wings. Pody. Wow, Zeeler dropped too. God damn. All the good players. All the good players dropped. Now, again, if I was actually paying attention with this series, I would have gotten rid of uh, McDavid and, you know, Matthews and Eichel. Much, much more quickly than we actually did. Because that pretty much screwed over the rest of the team. Now, a lot of these guys are only unhappy because of the lack of playoff success. Some of them, though, it's because we haven't been playing them in their proper role, which is completely understandable for the entirety of last season. I really, really didn't pay attention. We just kind of breezed through that. My God, people are looking to get paid. Although, keep in mind... Obviously, the salary cap has gone up, so these contracts aren't as bad as they look. They're still pretty bad, but they're not as bad as they look. Uh, Marta Kynan's terrible. We'll get rid of him. Oh, God, that's right. we got to re-sign Jack Eichel and then trade him. Holy shit, does he want to get paid. Oh, my God. 11-4-7-5 is the magic number for him. Good Lord. Good lord. Uh, Bolaris, I don't think, will resign with us, which is understandable. If he declines, I can't even blame him. Although, how bad would that be to lose a franchise level player? Part of the reason why the series has even continued, how bad would it be to lose him for nothing? Now, I do think I could just hand him a boatload of money and that he'll accept, which, you know, isn't quite ideal. But I still think it could happen. 2.2 uh, is the magic number for Tikhanov. 
I am intrigued to see how many of these players decline, as they probably should at this point. As they probably should. We have nearly $70 million to spend, by the way. <laughs> Which is just insane. So, let's see. Moment of truth for a lot of these players. Eichel accepts. Rudy Moran accepts. Roll off. Bowleries accepted. Holy shit. Wow. Didn't see that coming. Evans, Pody, Zeeler, uh, Scarlet declined. Galchenyuk declined. The two defensemen. That's it, though. Everybody else accepted, except for the two defensemen, which is fucking hilarious and, frankly, unbelievable. I can't believe it. I should, because it happened. I am going to try to get both of them back. At the very least, either to keep them, or just get rid of them in here. You know what? I will offer you a little bit more than what you're uh, asking for. And that should result in you re-signing. And then I'll still be able to trade you for absolutely nothing. Well, something at least. Man, we, we spent almost $50 million <laughs> on those contracts. But let's see if we can get these two defensemen to accept. Galchenyuk and Scarlet. And they both did. There you go. Moving on to free agency, where, again, Jack Eichel will probably be traded. We're going to go with the youth movement, the next wave of player to lead this team into future glory, maybe. Probably not. We're probably... You watch. We'll barely sneak into the playoffs. We will barely sneak into the playoffs, and then we'll find playoff success. That's how it'll happen. That's how it will happen. Uh, let's clear out ye old trading block, though. Draft pick-wise, hopefully we don't get too many offers. That would be nice. To free agency. We have arrived at free agency. How quickly that happened. Now, I do know... <clears throat> oh, hey, Benoit Guru, remember when he was on this team? <laughs> Neither do I. But he was. We do need to sign at least one goalie, because we only have three. Under contract right now. Stuart Skinner. Van Pottelberg. Could bring back uh, your and Van Pottelberg. What do we got for prospects? Anybody? Yeah, you look, yeah, if you're looking at the ages like I am, the answer is pretty much nobody. Koivu. 79 overall. 22 years old. It's about as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. Wow, the league minimum is 800k. How times have changed. Uh, and the rest are medium backup. So we'll hold off on that for now. We'll at least bring in that one player. At least bring in that one player. Uh, is there anybody else here, though? 24 years old? There's just nobody prospect-wise. <laughs> I mean, a little top four might work. I mean, maybe. But, nah, not really. Let's just search all forwards here. Let's just search all forwards. So anybody half decent again looking at the age column it's all 25 and 26 year olds which is just unfortunate medium top nine there's a lot of players but is that really an issue for us at the moment how many contracts do we have signed that is my question i can't believe our has our locker room chemistry ever been this low i don't know if it's ever been a 44 percent before that that takes some effort that takes some effort. Uh, we are at 41 contracts, so I might as well double check to see if there's anybody we should sign. And if there isn't, we'll go sign whoever the fuck. I don't even know. Uh, Bourdon is 20, so we can sign him up. What about Beach? Are you Canadian? Eric Beach. You're not. You're Austrian or whatever. Cool. Perfect. Sign him up. So dumb. So dumb. Can we please, please get region accurate names sometime in the future? I'm begging you. Just to have the database like you do now, but make the database individual for every nation. Pretty straightforward. Not all that difficult to accomplish, really. Please, that is one, like, here's the thing, like, with Ultimate Team, cool, you've done some stuff that I, you know, have been asking for for a while, you know, you've added some value to bronze cards, you've added some value to silver cards, and that's all well and good, but now franchise mode, 
needs a little bit of love and care. And it's little things like that that can at least make the you know it can make the game a bit more interesting, right? I'm tired of seeing Eric Jones from fucking Estonia, right? Like, come on, that's we, we can we can update that, we can fix that, we can make it a bit more accurate. It adds to the game. Trust me, it's helped. It, it's helped for FIFA. That's why I say that it's helped for FIFA. People complained for years that it's bullshit that I'm getting a Ryan Jones from Brazil. So now they fixed it, and you get Fernandinho. Any, basically, from Brazil, it's anyone that ends in Inho. And it's perfect. It's accurate. In France, you get Baguette Le, Le Baguette, and it's perfect. He's great. Great player. Cover star, 2018. You get the point. That was, that was, was that racist technically? <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. You get the point, though. Emphasis. Emphasis and casual racism. Swig of Arnold Palmer. To the next season, where we have to see if we can somehow repair our relationship with the majority of these players that hate us. Oh, do they hate me. They, I say us. It's mainly me. It's mainly me. They hate me, as they should, as the coach slash general manager slash water boy. I mean, really, I do everything around here. I do everything around here. I mean, I'm pretty sure I even sweep the floors of the arena. Just saying, I, I haven't seen otherwise. As far as the staff goes, I don't know. I don't know. Remember when you used to be? I mean, you know, you could upgrade the arena in this game. And that's all well and good. But owner mode is a little bit of a, uh, you know, owner mode is a little bit of a pain in the ass, shall we say. Speaking of pains in the ass, uh, on the laptop here, getting, oh, we need to, uh, we need to install updates. Which... Yeah, thanks, computer. That's that's awesome. No, it's so cool. It's so cool. I love when you randomly decide to install updates for absolutely no fucking reason. And then I try to change the time so that you don't fuck me over here while I'm recording. And you just don't pay attention. Thank you, PC. Thank you. Great. Lovely. Anyway, with that taken care of, what the hell is this roster going to look like? Now, again, everybody's pissed. Like, pissed at me. How can I repair some of these relationships? Or will it just be for the best <laughs> to perhaps trade away basically everybody? Like Hague's Mad, Dolan, Hronik, Galchenyuk, Scarlet. Everybody's pissed. Which is understandable. Which is understandable. Now, however, I do think Galchenyuk and Scarlet would both need to be traded. First and foremost. Our top line will probably be Pody, Zeeler, and Bolaris. So Eichel has to be traded as well. We got moves to make, is the point. Now, I do need to find the best defensive prospects that I can. Because Eichel's going, Galchenyuk, and unfortunately Nolan Scarlett are going. I mean, otherwise it would have to be Haig, Dolan, and Hronik. And Sylvan's not going anywhere at the moment. Even though Sylvan gets paid a fucking boatload, it, it's not like we have to really worry about it at the moment. We're, you know, we're not really having to worry about it, so... Here's the deal. Let's tag uh, all three of these guys here. I need defensive prospects. Remember, keyword, prospects. Not 90 overall, Kale McCarr. Prospects. And the question is, who can really afford to take on a Jack Eichel contract? And do they have prospects? Which, I mean, in the case of Buffalo, not really. How about Columbus? No, well, eh, eh, Smithson and Paris, no, they're just, no, they're garbage, hot garbage, 
Chicago, do you have a defensive prospect? You don't have defense at all. Sorry I asked. Boy, you are in rough shape. Worse shape than us, apparently. How is that possible? Uh, Dallas, you don't have anybody. Come on, somebody has to have a defensive prospect, right? And a good one. Nobody has defense. The hell. What happened to all the great players we traded away? Where are they? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're all 90 overalls now. Forgot. Silly me. How, how I'm just, I'm so forgetful. Uh, New York, do you have a defenseman? Not really. Not really. Ottawa? Ottawa. No, you do not. And that means we're out of options. Yay! Okay, how the hell... How the hell are we going to get ourselves out of this problem? Okay, first things first. Let's see if we can trade these two for a defensive prospect. Please, God, let there be somebody. <laughs> Anybody. And then we'll work on trading Jack Eichel for a bag of pucks. That's pretty much all we can afford to take back at this point in time. Now, there has to be somebody. There has to be somebody. We can make this work. There we go. Perfect. Good enough for me. And someone who would be a bottom six defenseman. Or bottom six defenseman? Well, yeah, technically. Uh, third pairing defenseman. Sooner rather than later. Is there somebody else here too? Zajac. Perfect. That won't go through. We're going to have to give up a little bit to make this happen. We're going to have to give up just a little bit to make this happen, which is cool. No worries. Again, we pretty much intentionally put ourselves into this bad of a situation just to kind of make this series as interesting as it could be down the stretch rather than like, oh, hey, we won again. Look, franchise level player, we won again and again and again and the next day and the next day. You get the point. The question is, can I get this deal done? Like, I get it, St. Louis. Like, you know, this team's pretty garbage and all. Like, I get it. But still, let's do some business here. Let's not try to completely screw me over. You're getting two NHL-level defensemen back, two top four defensemen, who will very, very much so bounce back the second they are off my team. Will that go through? Quite low. Just a, a bit low, you say. A bit low defines a fifth or a fourth round pick. So don't be dicks. Thank you. Uh, Scarlet got turned two seconds and a fourth for Laconan and Zajac and a third. Works for me. Scarlet and Galchenyuk. I'm sorry we couldn't work things out. I'm sorry. Boy, now even more people are pissed. <laughs> even more people are pissed. How are we going to do this? Holy shit, Simon's the top four guy, too. Good lord. This team. Like, how? Like, how am I even going to keep Simon happy? Philip Simon. Great. Oh, God. Right. I don't know if I can repair the relationship with Haig, Dolan, and Hronik. I don't know if it can happen. We might be 100% screwed. Just saying. We we might not be able to get this to work. <laughs> now, at the very least, I am going to try to trade Jack Eichel, as I said I would. That's going to piss off everybody else even more. The goal at this point is to try like hell to dig ourselves out of this hole. Can we find a way to somehow escape this? Now, we've seen this situation, of course, with, say, Brady Shea. You know, with Brady Shea in uh, the Manhattan Project. And we were able to recover. This situation's just a tad bit different. Just a tad. A tad bit different. How many? Now again, we're trading for Jack Eichel here. Or trading Jack Eichel here. How many of these players can I get? I think I just want Lamb, really. I mean, I'm never going to get fair value back in return. But we might as well try. We might as well try. How much can I get back in return on this deal for Jack Eichel? That probably won't go through. If it does, I'm fine with it. It didn't. That's hilarious. 
A lack of through? Still no. Lovely. No, it's fine. Just fine, you scumbags. Will that go through? Holy hell. How about that? Still no. How about this? It's amazing what the hell these teams won't uh, accept. It's incredible. Will that go through? Really? New York, one first round pick, and this guy isn't worth Jack Eichel. Wow, man. Wow. Holy hell. The, it, you know what, though? I'm fine with it. It's just, it's the AI getting their revenge. Like, I sat here, and I fleeced the AI throughout the entirety of this series. They're getting their revenge, and that's fine. I'll let them have it. I'll let them have it. It's cool. No worries. It's cool. So, as far as this team goes, is there anybody I can call up? Boy, is there. Uh, Johnson and Yakubov, we would be under the minimum salary, you say. Well, that should fix it. Apparently not. Ah, uh, shit. We'll keep Corvo. I guess. It's amazing that we're struggling with the salary cap right now. <laughs> it's incredible that we are struggling with the salary cap. So, let's see. We got a three, six, nine. Okay, well, the top nine set, which is wonderful. <laughs> Good. That's fine. That's fine. We just got to make the the fourth line a little bit better. Just a tiny bit better, you know, as in not completely fucking awful. And, that, and then we'll be good. Not quite, you know, years past where, hey, Paris is on your fourth line, and then by the end of the year, he's second line worthy. You know, we're not quite in those days anymore. Uh, who's the second liner? That would be Janssen. And that is the third line. Perfect. Uh, who can play center? You know what? We'll go with Evans, Janssen, Evans, Janssen. Eh, Janssen's better defensively. That works. I don't know if it's Janssen or Johnson. He's Swedish, so you never know. And we have Zeeler and Pody on the top line. Not too bad. Again, we'll see if Polaris can recover. That's going to be uh, it's going to be to be determined. Uh, and also Yakubov should be the center. Again, i got to fix the fourth line. On defense, can we keep people happy? That is the question. That is the question. We have a lot of work to do. To do so, by the way, you know, the fact that we do have another Enforcer D-man after we lost Nolan Scarlet. And Boyer's up to a 90, so that's good. What do we have for scratched players? Okay. So... Uh, was Tubert the fourth liner? He was. He's a power forward. Not great that he's a fourth liner, but we can put him on the fourth line. That's fine. Uh, Norinen and Kolosov might actually deserve that ice time. So I need to go out and sign a veteran for dirt cheap. And by dirt cheap, I mean the max contract. So that I have freedom to do whatever the hell I want to do with the call-ups and the send-downs because of cap space. Dan Renouf! We could bring back Dan Renouf. And we will! One of the original players from this series. Again, uh, $21 million is way too much. The game isn't programmed to accept the $21 million contract, so we need to reduce this to, let's say, 13. 13 should be okay. Again, I could offer him $21 million right now and he'll decline. Because the game registers it as basically zeros. Like offering him basically nothing. So let's do that. That's good. Also, I need another goalie. We need a fifth goaltender. In case of injuries, not sure who that is going to be. At this point, Adam Werner's available. Any other old names? I mean, you got Wells. I mean, familiar names for sure. Who is Gore? Gore. Lewis Gore. Hell of a name. Hell of a name. Hell of a bowler. For those who didn't know, Lewis Gore, hell of a bowler. Uh, is that... Uh, no, it's not Jimmy Howard. Jimmy Howard is uh, long since retired. Here's a former goalie of ours, Dan Streit. Dan Streit. Let's bring him back to Hockey Town, shall we? Good old Dan Streit. What a guy. What a guy. Dan Streit. Coming back to Hockey Town, unless he declines for some reason, like a douche. No players from the rest of world category, because this game is determined to never hand us another North Korean player again. Which, racism, really. 
let's be on the call a spade a spade he gave us one good north korean and now they never show back up what's up with that what is up with that you know what it is really it's oh you know your buddy sin managed to get like a medium top six north korean forward so we're not going to give you shit deal with it and that's what's happened and you know what that's cool i will i will allow sin to have that one victory he deserves it he's not gonna have too many other victories that's right scoreboard although i don't even know if i can proclaim scoreboard I, I, well I, I can proclaim scoreboard on twitch i think he still has me beaten subscriber count on youtube but not for long maybe i don't know hopefully we both go neck and neck until we hit like 100k each that would be great anyway I'm still trying to repair this team, right? This series is called Rebuilding Hockey Town, and now, perhaps more than ever, we have to rebuild this team. Because again, we still have a lot of very upset players, which is understandable. Understandable. I'm gonna send down Corvo. Uh, we'll call up Tubert. Fuck you, that should go through no problem. Uh, let's call up Dan Renouf, who's actually 78. And you will just sit there. You will sit there. Perfect. Let's go best lines. And again, the team is pretty much set. Which is great. Was Yakubov? Okay, good. Yakubov was the third line guy. So, I mean, you know, that, that fourth line is pretty rough. If, you know, call spade a spade again. But they should improve. I mean, we have two 23-year-olds where it's like, okay, now's your time to shine, right? We'll see what happens. And Tubert's never going to be great, but that's okay. I mean, we do still have three legitimate first-line guys, th uh, three legitimate second-line guys, three legitimate third-line guys. So we're, we're looking all right. The big question is on defense, can we somehow repair these issues i don't know if we can but i think the main team for now is good i mean the oldest guy there is cole lind everyone else is 25 or under which is cool the ahl you know we might have to worry about it a little bit kind of maybe uh Koy vista was ours isn't he yeah he's garbage but we'll play him over straight that's fine uh, let me double check here as far as who we have to get rid of. Like, Celios can go, for example, right? Like, we can trade Celios and allow me to uh, mark down his name uh, for getting rid of him. Kaminsky, though, is good. Kaminsky, good guy to keep. And again, I got to get my little depth chart going here. Kuhlman, great player. Great player. He's staying. Uh, Lakonen, another great player. And uh, Lakonen and Kaminsky will probably be our top pairing and are also the most likely to reach the nhl sooner rather than later we have bowling as well so we're actually looking pretty good defensively aside for uh from uh, igor anisimov who we might have to sign because that is an ahl level signing i think as is markstrom no wait markstrom's actually our guy okay as is uh hargrave and beach that's right we have eric beach that needs to play the rest are medium top six. Right, so we got to have Beach playing, and then we'll have Labrie as the backup, which means Hargrave and Markstrom are the depth defensemen. Right, I'm going to have to sign Igor and Isimov, which sucks. I'll, I will be able to trade him relatively quickly, but that way, too, I don't have to worry about him. Uh, you know, whenever I go best line, so like I'll sign him, and then a month into the season we'll trade him. We'll get rid of him. That'll be cool. So Celios has to go, and he just never made it. Low elite potential, not really all that surprising. But the AHL is going to be looking all right. It's going to be looking all right. Not great. I don't think we're going to see the Griffins return to their Calder Cup dynasty ways, but they're going to be okay. So that's one positive. You could probably mark down the positives on this team with just one hand. So, damn it, take the victory where you can get it. Is that a Henrik Zetterberg on defense, by the way? Henrik? Hey, Henrik Zetterberg, a regen drafted by Montreal. 
Uh, Igor Anisimov, you are hot garbage. God, it has to be an entry-level deal, too, but you know what? I have to do it. I have to do it. It's fine. We'll sign him. Let me trade Trent Selios really quickly. That way we can actually have him accept that deal. Selios has no value whatsoever. Can I send you to Ed Money? Can I send you to Ed Money? That is the question. Uh, for a fourth, fifth, and a sixth. Why the hell not? Probably not. How about just a fourth and a sixth? How about just a fourth? Wow, Trent Salios, you're not even worth a fourth round pick. What a failed experiment you were with low elite potential. Are you worth a fifth? Like, if you're not even worth a fifth. Okay, good. Thank God. Wow. Damn. Damn, what's the matter with you? Okay, well, at least he's gone. And then, like I mentioned, for the AHL, we are pretty much set. That's our six. I think. Hold on. So it's Kaminsky, Lakonin, uh, Kuhlman, Bolig, Beach, and Labrie. Zajax AHL. That's that's who I wasn't recognizing. Uh, or is, is he? Uh, AHL? I'm in CHL. Is he? Let me double check. Why wasn't I recognizing him? CHL? Perfect. He is. He's a junior player. I <laughs> actually can't send him down because we'd be under the cap. Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Shit. I'll have to figure out the AHL side of things and then sign a veteran forward to another near max deal. It is unreal. Uh, as far as this team is set up, like how good we are. But yeah. Uh, so Hargrave and Markstrom will be the healthy scratch. So we'll have to get rid of Igor Anisimov as soon as possible. So that leaves forwards. How many guys do we have signed? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we got to get rid of at least one player. At least one player. Unless, of course, we have junior players, which we might. Which we might see here. Let's go best lines there. Who is scratched for forwards? Uh, Daniel Bordon, who is one of our guys. Harry Sloan, who is one of our guys. And that's it. So that's actually not too bad. We could afford to have one extra healthy scratch, I believe. Um, is there anybody here that shouldn't be? Like AHL signing, basically, is what I'm asking. And no, so that is great news. But as far as getting rid of someone who's not going to make it, I mean, Travis Corvo has to go. Oh, that didn't really rhyme. I, I forced it. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody. White guy here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Corvo has to go. He's just not going to work out. Is there anybody else? Uh, Judry is pretty bad. So he's got to go too. Anybody else who's just never going to make the NHL? It's pretty much just those two. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We can get rid of them no problem. I'm struggling to think of why we're at 49 contracts. I guess we just have a lot of players in the AH or the CHL. We must have a lot of players sent down to junior. That's the only thing that really makes sense. So Corvo and Judry have to go. I imagine they're gonna have really low trade value. They have the two lowest for forwards. No surprise. Can I send you to Minnesota? Probably not, but I'm going to try. I am going to try. Third round pick. Straight up. I'll take it if you will. Thank you very much. With that we get rid of of some garbage we get rid of some garbage which is always nice again we have the offer waiting for Anisimov we'll have to sign him and then get rid of him aside from that we're pretty much good to go I think pretty much again for forwards I could sign two extra forwards now and we'd be okay I will have to set up the uh, special teams for the NHL. So the lowest overall guy is a 70. Boris Grachev. So I need to sign. I need to sign. Uh, two. Yeah. Two forwards. Maybe even three. At the very least for now. Two forwards. I think I'll be able to sign a third after we get rid of an easy moth. So two forwards below a 70 overall as depth signings. We can sign them the pretty big contracts to counteract the fact that we are at the cap floor despite having still a pretty solid team not the best team we've had in this series not even close but still 
a pretty decent team. Granted, we are, of course, going under a severe morale crisis. Uh, Tyler Gravatch could sign you. Kind of don't want her, though. Uh, we have Sergei Tolchinsky available. Again, below 70 overalls. Kopech. Goulet. I'm looking for below 70s. Van Stone. We got a Ross, a Nantel. Uh, Muzito Bagenda. You haven't retired yet, huh? Well, you're getting signed. It's your lucky day, pal. You've won the lottery. You are the next contestant on The Price is Right. I'm going to sign you to like a $12 million deal, I guess. Something like that. Whatever works. It takes forever to scroll here. Another great thing about FIFA, you can just hit the Y button and then manually change each damn number as you see fit. It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, so let's sign him, and then I need another contestant. Who's it going to be? Who is it going to be? We're looking for a winner below a 70 overall. Looking for names. Looking for familiar names. Funny names. Anybody, really. Who is the next contestant on The Price is Wrong? I might just have to pick a name here at any possible moment. This is taking much longer than I expected. We have an Albin Storm there, apparently. A Jeremiah Addison Overhard. Yeah, that's got to be somebody. Somebody? Ski Dung. Isaac Ski Dung. Skidung. Either way, he's being signed. Either way. Ah, he's on an entry level deal. Ski Dung. Ski Dung. I'm sorry. Uh, oh god, no, damn it, nope, there was a guy named Topping. I didn't even see his overall, but his name is fucking Topping. How good were you? Your last name is Topping. That's hilarious to me. We'll find him, damn it. I'll sit here all day. Where is he? Topping? Where are you? How good are you? I don't even care if you're over 70. You're a 66. It's perfect. Jordan Topping, he's a real guy. My god. Entry-level deal, I don't even care. I'm just signing you. Entry-level deal at 34 years old, by the way. Topping. Great name. Great name. What a guy. Captain of the team for Grand Rapids. Maybe even the NHL. We'll see. Uh, Nisimov accepted, which is great. Again, remind me to trade him. Uh, I don't even know if I'll record the next episode live on Twitch. If I don't, hopefully I can remember. To get rid of them, if necessary. Everybody signed. Everybody have fun tonight. Everybody. Bazito, Magenga, Badenga, whatever the hell his name was tonight. Oh, forwards. Uh, no extra players there. Defenseman. Again, can I send down Zajac now? Yes, I can. Perfect. Perfect. So, Bazudo, Magenga, Mabemba. What is it? Muzito, Bagenda. I will never remember that. Welcome to the team, though, buddy. Welcome to the team. So, again, the NHL is set. The AHL should be set, uh, with the exception of having to take an easy moth out for Beach. Good old Beach. And we'll have Markstrom in. Perfect. This team is looking half decent. And we'll actually take out Dan Streit. In favor of Koi Visto. So yeah, Koi Vu was our goalie, right? Yeah, medium fringe. Perfect. Okay, so it's not like we have a good goalie coming up in the pipeline. Not like we need it. We're doing all right otherwise. So let's see. As far as potentials go. Because we will still sort it by potential. Uh, medium top nines immediately go to the bottom of the list. We actually don't even have that many, which is nice. Uh, there was a high bottom six in there. There's a high top nine as well. So high bottom six goes there. Medium top six is next. Perfect. And then the two high top nines. All right, so medium top six. It's those three. We'll put Bussieras up there, which is fine. So that means the top line is looking all right still, all things considered. It'll be Castingway, Jason Lamb, and Boris Grachev. Second line. Good old second line. 
We'll have Boussieres center, so that's good. Third line. Uh, we will go with Hurd, even though his face-offs were slightly worse. And then the fourth line. Fourth line is looking good. So there you go, the Grand Rapids Griffins heading in to the next season. Not the best team overall-wise. Still some good potentials, though. The top line, all elite players. Second line, I mean, high top nine is at least more valuable in-game than medium top six. As stupid as that is. But we still have got some good names in there. And then, of course, defensively. I mean, we have five elite defensemen. We're looking pretty good. I mean, here's the thing. If, I mean, if we keep, you know, if we continue this, we're going to naturally replace our defensemen. Haig, Kronik, Dolan. Fuck, I could trade them all right now if I really wanted to, but I do want to try to rep the relationship and then slowly phase them out for the players that we have right here, right? So I think that's the way to do it. I could even trade one of them right now uh, for Philip Simon to get that ice time. But for the moment, we will see if we can repair that relationship. So as far as this team goes, again, let me, because we need to properly set this up. I could even do this off stream. And you know what? I will do it uh, off the episode. So I'll just take care of this uh, off screen. But just know that this is, the, this is the team. You know, I'll get the special team set up. It's looking good. Cole Lind will probably be named captain. But... The question is heading into this year, will Bola Reese recover? We know he's a 93, naturally. Will he end up being that good? Evans and Yakubov, now second line guys. It's not too bad, and then we still have a chance for Kolobov, Tubert, and Nornan to eventually uh, maybe progress, but odds are casting away, Lamb, pretty much everybody you see here will have a decent shot of ending up on that fourth line before these guys end up progressing up to even the third line. So, overall, we're looking good with the exception of Yakubov uh, not being uh, there, because that's not where he is supposed to be at all. I think it was Tekin off that was still the center. Level. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. So, that pretty much does it. That pretty much does it. And like I said, I think my interest in the series has, at least for the moment, been renewed by... The pressure to turn this team into a winner yet again. Our ratings are as low as they've been in a very long time. 96 offense, 95 defense, 94 goaltending. Of course, that can improve just by the morale of the team improving. It's still only at a 63. Down in the AHL, 80, 78, and 81 for the ratings. Not bad. Of course, the goaltending could be even better if we didn't have Dan Streit scratched. The last thing we'll do... Before we end this episode, we need to find out who our captains are. Damn it. And if, it, if it's even worth changing the NHL captains. Uh, AHL, Hurd, and Kuhlman need letters. And if I'm, even though he's not playing, I might even give the captaincy to Topping. I just might. And actually, we'll keep Kaminsky as the captain. Uh, because he is a decent part of our future. You could even argue not taking the letter off of Lakonin, But that's okay. Oh, God. Oh, that was Heard. That's who it was. I'm like, wait a minute. It was Heard and who? Heard and Kuhlman, I think. Could be wrong. Hopefully not. Unfortunately, some people aren't going to be happy about losing those letters. They'll get over it. At the NHL level, uh, wow, Nick Haig isn't even a leader anymore. See, naturally, he's a 91. He's down to an 86. Brutal. Let me at least see who the captains are. Because we wouldn't go along with the morale system and what they say. So, Zeeler, Rolou, and Hronik. I can't afford to strip anybody of a letter right now, except maybe Sylvan. I think I could get away with uh, taking the letter off of Sylvan. And you know what? I am going to do that. I am going to do that. We're going to give the captaincy to Haig, and that should fix him. Now, really quickly, what if I unassign the letter and reassign it to Zeeler and Hronik? Is that going to make it worse, or is the game going to be like, eh, who cares? I'm intrigued to see what happens. <laughs> but at the very least, with Haig, it, sh it should make a difference. Hopefully. Maybe. Uh, Bolaris, Dawn, and Hronik are still disgruntled. Uh, and Sylvan's still a 94. So we're good there. Guys, that will do it. An interesting episode. Once again, rebuilding this team, in a way. 
I mean, we're still set up very well for the future. Boyer is the man here now. We'll see what he can do in the next episode as he is the starter. But for now, we are done here. If you're joining me live on Twitch, we're not stopping just yet, so stick around. But if you're watching this on YouTube, after the fact, this is your stopping point. But I thank you for watching. You know what you got to do to support the video and the channel. It's funny, I've pretty much forgotten my normal outro. Like, my, my intro has always been the same for the most part. My outro, though, tends to evolve. I can't even remember, the, remember it at this point. I'd always mention the Twitch, twitch.tv slash 2 24 I'd mention the Twitter, 2 24 I'd mention the notification squad, subscribe and liking, blah, 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 all that. Fuck it. You know what to do. It's YouTube. You know what to do. And on Twitch, you know what to do. Anyway, that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time on the series that refuses to die.